Okay, I am now recording, testing, testing, checking test. the test. Okay, not going to pull a Florian yeah. this time and not even check the test. <laughs> I think well, this test is positive, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. HIV positive. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow, this is what I'm going to have to put up with. Huh? <laughs> yeah. You guys oh, ready? Where that came from, yeah. yeah. Hey, right. everybody. Oh, thanks, Florian, you motherfucker. <laughs> Fucking Austrians okay, you, always butting in where they're not wanted. You can start the, the podcast now. Come yeah, on, I'm kidding. First, you guys take over the Nazi yeah. party. Now you're taking over my podcast. What's going on? Yeah, just, just start the podcast. <laughs> he's, get, he's fuming. I, 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 I won't interrupt again. I, I can I hear swear. the steam and smoke coming out of his ears as we speak. <laughs> There's three of us. There's three of us. Three. Look closely, you will sneed. There's me. Okay, now I'm actually going to start it. Florian can keep his goddamn big mouth shut. Fucking honeycomb ass, eating ass, motherfucker. It's pretty hard to interrupt right when you start, you know? Yeah, and somehow you found a way. <laughs> I got a bit. <laughs> okay. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the boys. Oh, fuck. I fucked it up. It's the bros, not the boys. <laughs> I wish we were talking about the boys today. Much better. Uh, hey, everybody. Welcome back to Is It Kino, your favorite bros review podcast. We've got three bros here to talk about the gayest movie to come out since <laughs> um, Wasted Hours. I am Simeon Jimmy, joined as always by my number one bro, Florian Himsel. Yep, finally we can express our love in the most healthy way, being just so... So open and proud and pro and, and gay, so gay. You yeah, know? just like the Flintstones, we're gonna have a gay old time. And my bro, who I actually watched this movie with in the theater, completely alone, nobody else bought a ticket or showed up. <laughs> Eggy Eggman Rodriguez. Thank you. I am so happy to be here today to discuss the incredible complexities of this film. It's got so many messages. It's so layered. Uh, and I'm very happy to be here. Wow, how how could you possibly watch this without more people joining in to to finger you and and have sex <laughs> with you? Well, listen, I mean, we're this is a gay movie, not a European movie. You know what I'm saying? Wait, you thought this movie was kind of gay? <laughs> no way. Hmm. I didn't get that impression. What part of the movie was gay to you, Aggy? <laughs> Well, I think, um, you know, the first part where the main character meets one of his dozens of love interests at the club and he says, uh, oh, I just drank that man's urine. And that guy's like, yeah, it's most definitely what's up. <laughs> Wait, did that really happen? <laughs> yes, I, I uh, you, you didn't take notes on the no, part. Yeah, so I have the, to be well, honest, Aggie and I saw this when it came out like two weeks ago. And we wanted to have Florian on the show, but he could not access the movie yet. So we had to wait a little bit. And at this point, I've lost a lot of my uh, knowledge of the film. Really, uh, the important things I have in my brain, so we'll cover those. But there might be some little uh, gay details well, that Florian has well, to fill us in on. Yeah, don't worry, because I remember it as if I had literally just watched it for a second time. And the scene actually goes like this. He, he says... Yeah, I, I had that guy pee on me, and he was like, are, are you into that? Is, was, was that good? He was like, nah, it's, it's kind of weird, kind of boring. But, you know, what am I going to do, you know? And then in, like, yeah, the follow-up scene, for him. he meets a guy on Grinder who doesn't want to have sex. He just wants to lay next to him in bed and jerk off onto him, and then he, like, gets <laughs> jizzed on, and then he leaves. So, yeah, you know, classic gay movie. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Florian, I, I, as the only bisexual on the panel, how did you feel I, about the representation of the LGBT in this film? Well, I feel like the bisexual guy was very annoying, but I think everyone else That's the else dean was from Community. Good. How dare you? That's the I only know, guy I like. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that's too bad that you didn't like these these great characters that were so well written. <laughs> it's, it's bizarre. I, I'm actually sincere. I think this is probably my my favorite romantic movie that I've ever seen. There aren't many, but I think this is my favorite. You know, <laughs> just really well, like we're glad. Guys. You know what? We uh we didn't know that if we'd ever have a live podcast where you'd finally come to your true self, Florian. <laughs> but uh, you know what? We're happy to have you. All. Uh, you know, have this moment, this milestone on this podcast today. Yeah, the fact that you found this 
gay rom-com to be so romantic and enjoyable, Florian? Did this awaken anything in you? Are you coming out of the closet for this podcast? Because Eggy and I are not the type to judge. We will support you. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm not coming out. I'm not. Oh, you're gay, staying but... in the closet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like like Abraham Lincoln, you know, we're putting him back. Oh in the God, closet. I forgot about that. Yeah, the, the main <laughs> character. Okay, just to be clear, this movie, ten percent of the movie is a gay rom com about having lots of gay sex and gay orgies. The other ninety percent of the film is the writer slash star of the movie, Billy Eichner, just preaching his political opinions and like giving five minute speeches looking at the camera saying like all the political stances he holds trying to prove that Abraham Lincoln was gay and a lot of pedo shit like a surprising amount of pro pedophilia shit is in this what? movie you don't remember that Florian a after no, watching what? it twice well what are you talking about he gives a whole speech at dinner about how he thinks all prepubescent boys should be given the opportunity to see a gaggle of naked men <laughs> fully erect, like in person, not even like a porno. Like he wants young boys to see naked men in person just in case they might be gay and that seeing all these erect penises at the age of 10 will awaken their true self. You don't remember that part. Well, he actually specified that they were soft penises, so... I, I don't know how so you. He's can... only a little bit of a pedophile. Yeah, child what the monster. fuck are you talking about, Florian? Does that make it better? <laughs> well, I mean, I'm sure some of the guys were got hard. I mean, you know, so many naked, sexy men who wouldn't be hard. I mean, I just went to like some some kind of gay theater. I don't know. It's not the worst. Jeez. Yikes. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know if we need it. I think that theater should have had an 18 plus policy given that material. I think about as worse as it could be is if they literally started walking in the audience and like murdering people <laughs> while like doing things to their corpses sexually. That's about as that's about that's about as far as it could possibly go as where if we're on like the worst o meter. That's about the only further that it could possibly get in terms of how much worse it could be. Well, if you've yeah, ever been having... to a musical lately, like, you know, a Rock of Ages or really any modern musical, they like to have the singers, like, go down the aisles and, like, join the audience to, you know, really make everybody feel like they're part <laughs> of the show. Why didn't these gay men start, you know, humping and grinding all the audience members to really bring the play to life? You know, why not shove that flaccid cock in the 10-year-old boy's <laughs> face? Wow. I, I don't know, man. You you, you, really, you think you can't have something like that where they where they just have like gay men on stage? Like they probably didn't even even know that there would be kids. He's advocating that all prepubescent children should have access to seeing naked men in real life. Well, I mean, he brought that up as a, an example. I don't think that's specifically what he was advocating. He was. Sure. Uh, he literally was. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure that that's exactly... Uh, I don't know if there's anything that he would advocate more strongly for. <laughs> I, mean, I think everything else was kind of just like, you know, sort of uh, setting the, the table, so to speak, for his uh, true desires. I think that was probably the most candid that he was... Which is saying a lot because, you know, as we said uh, throughout the movie, he literally just mauled scopes and seeds for numerous minutes at a time. <laughs> he literally, you could just have like Reddit green text bot, just like text to speech playing, and you that would probably be about 90% uh, accuracy for his typical <laughs> tirades that he goes on throughout the film. I mean, that was specifically the part where he was turning it up to 11 to, to piss off the, the guy's mom who, who said that the, the kids shouldn't even learn about gay people. I don't know. Well, she was I a second grade okay. teacher and he's like, listen up, I think your second graders <laughs> need to take a field trip to my favorite play. And she was <laughs> yeah, not I mean, having it. Yeah, but so in the end of the movie, they, they just go to his, his gay museum and there's, there's no cocks on display, okay? Come on, Despite man. his protests, like every other person working <laughs> at, the, at the museum had to save the exhibit because he was trying to ruin everything with his <laughs> fucking kinks and shit. I think young children should see my gay kinks in public. I'm Billy Eichner. <laughs> Billy on the street, just like my penis should be. <laughs> <laughs> Billy in the bathhouse, new sequel, all right. Yeah, it's pretty much greenlit at this point. Well, maybe he went a little too far, okay? But well, he's just so charismatic, all right? I, I just can't look away. He's, he's great, all right? He's, the main character is charismatic in the film? 
I know, imagine that. I, I I was glued to his every word, and that's not usually a thing, okay? Wow. It's, it's quite it's well it's quite rare that uh, that there's there's a guy who's such a so cynical and yet so sincere at the same time and, and he always has something interesting to say, all right? <laughs> Okay, well, let's uh, let's give a little bit of background here. This movie is very much autobiographical for Billy Eichner, who is he's not the name of the character. That's the name of the guy who made the movie. He is, uh, I guess, most famous for doing Billy on the street where he harasses um, African-American women in New York City and like just like calls them mean names while filming them uh, without their permission. And then he posts it online and I guess celebrities liked it enough to join the show like Paul Rudd and Jack Black. Um, is and he makes it, is a, that specifically what, what he does. Yes, harassing black women. Yes, if you look up yeah, like I'm, best of <laughs> Billy on the street, it's just him harassing black women. Wow, which you know is based. I'm not gonna knock him for that. <laughs> I'm all about it. Uh, and in this movie, like the parody, or I guess like the the self insert for his character is that he's a f- world famous podcaster. So instead of being just like a street urchin harassing people, he, you know, he, in this version of himself, people like want to listen to what he has to say. And he has, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of podcast fans, let's say he, he gets more than 3000 views per episode. So he's killing it more than we are. Yeah, he, he actually celebrates the start of the movie that he reaches one million subscribers. But I think that having a, a TV show. An actual TV show that's rated eight out of ten on IMDb is, is probably a little bit higher an achievement than having a podcast. But okay, uh, I would well, guarantee that a million subscriber podcast is uh, he, he gets more viewers than his TV show did. I'm pretty sure it got canceled a long time ago. Well, yeah, but TV shows make money more than podcasts do. I want to say this. Tell uh, that to fucking uh, Joe Rogan. This- well, what makes this especially <laughs> heinous to me is so he celebrates having a million subscribers. He has in, in the clip that it shows, you know, it's like he's, you know, the it's him doing a live stream basically to celebrate. It has 215,000, and I remember specifically, concurrent live viewers. That is not proportional. I know how the algorithms work. You would not have 215,000 concurrent live viewers with only 1 million subscribers. It doesn't add up. Furthermore, what he's talking about is he's like celebrating his, uh, his his incredible accomplishments which include like uh, his non-binary trans children's uh, nursery rhyme series or something to that effect <laughs> and that's also completely there's no way that 200,000 people would take time out of their precious lunch break or whatever to celebrate or, and he's not even celebrating he's like lamenting that you know oh yeah I'm the best but uh, I really should have been even more the best because my non-binary children book sh- series, you know, should have won- made me a billion dollars instead of a million dollars, but uh, nobody appreciates how incredible of a genius I am. Thank you millions of people for <laughs> sitting here to suck my cock live on your lunch break. Now time to go live my incredible <laughs> life of amazing incredibleness where I'm the best person that's ever lived. And that's like three minutes into the fucking movie, and it paints no. the picture for everything. He actually says that it bombed, that he's not going to write a second one. That's what he said about the, the children's book. Well, also he's lamenting that his incredible success that <laughs> everywhere in life it's not <laughs> translating then he should be even more successful as he has 200,000 live viewers. I'm just saying that. That's like, oh, woe is me. I'm only, yeah. I should be, my dick should be sucked by everybody instead of just 90% of people. Yeah, and just to be clear, if you have 200,000 concurrent live stream viewers during a celebration stream, like he's making at least 10 grand an hour in fucking super chats. So I don't know why he has any room to complain. he would be making oh, fucking yeah. bank. <laughs> Eggy and I make bank with like 100 people watching. Wow. Wow, you should stream more, I guess. Yeah, Damn. maybe I should. <laughs> but uh, also, <laughs> uh, given the demographics of the United States, like LGBT people are probably less than 2%. So it, with a million subscribers, am I supposed to believe every single gay person on earth is subscribed to his podcast? <laughs> like, who is listening to this shit? He's just talking. <laughs> like, he's he's coping, seething, and raging. We The only podcast segment we hear is him screaming about how much he hates cis white people. It's like not even like uh, uplifting you, at all. It's just him angry. Well, he talks about how he hates a lot of people, especially gays. <laughs> that is true. Like, Wait, what does really he say about f- hating gay people? That they won't come in his ass only all over his chest? Well, he, no, his, he, uh, <laughs> he repeatedly recall, calls them stupid. Yeah. He thinks they're so pretentious and, and they're, they're such whores. That's what he thinks of them. Was he secretly red-pilled all along? 
Well, yeah. <laughs> well, he's like a he's a big brain Wojak like that. He's literally a big brain soy jack, and he's like. It, if I'm, I'm paraphrasing a bit here, but he says something along the lines of uh, the, the best thing we ever did was fool America into thinking that all gay people are geniuses. I'm a gay genius, but all these meatheads <laughs> out here, all these meatheads in the bathhouse, are, uh, they don't even want to talk about how good my podcast is and how much Reddit gold I have. And oh my goodness, why are they not talking about how great I am? They're all so stupid. I'm a real genius and all these other gay people are stupid. I can't believe how stupid they are. I hate them. So basically, basically everyone around him is like, Yikes. <laughs> yeah, so Billy Eichner wrote this movie about himself where he's like the coolest, most awesome gay guy. He's like the most popular gay podcaster of all time. And everything about him is perfect and great. And every gay Chad should want to have sex with him. Uh, meanwhile, in real life, I think now's a good time to interject uh, the Twitter uh, coping and seething that Billy Eichner has been doing. Oh, wow. Uh, the movie was a huge bomb, like one of the biggest financial failures of the year, and Billy Eichner has spent the last month on Twitter blaming straight people for his movie failing. Like, if you didn't see this movie, you are homophobic. <laughs> it's your fault my movie failed. Uh, it can't be because the only movie poster is just like a close-up shot of two guys' asses and they're like cupping each other's ass cheeks. You know, oh, th this will sell our movie. Yeah, I really want to go see that story. Wow, that's that's too bad, but I I'm all for it, okay? You're Blame all for audience. blaming America for your shitty yes. movie bombing? I am all for You didn't pay America. to see this. You're to blame too, Florian. Eggy and I are the only <laughs> ones who can talk about this because we actually supported the art. We were there in person opening weekend with our wallets out. Oh, I paid. I paid to see this. How dare you? Uh, well, you have, to, you have to pay for the yiffy fucking cam rip. <laughs> You can't prove I, I didn't see it. How dare you? <laughs> you said you saw it twice. Are so you telling me you went to the theater twice to see bros? Oh, two, yeah, see, two tickets for bros, please. One for the morning uh, showing and one for the evening. Yeah, I supported it as much as you two. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, well. I'm the best. Eggy, uh, how, how joyous did you feel, you know, you and me walking through the theater and having to show our ticket stubs <laughs> to the guy and say, yep, me and him are going to go see bros together? Was that fun? Well, see, I don't know if you, uh, you might not have picked up on this, but I think one of the theater employees actually made a remark about that. I, I, I heard what that. What did he say? He did when we were, uh, I can't remember specifically, but like something, all right, no, he, uh, said gonna need to clean the seats up in there or something like that. What? I don't know if you heard that, but I, now no, the <laughs> thing is, no, the thing is, hold on, hold on. The thing is, is that, um, Obviously, uh, we were. I don't think I saw anybody else around us when we were having our tickets checked. Uh, so, uh, I, but and there was a couple employees standing there, so they could have been talking about, oh, some kid just spilled a soda, whatever, in a different theater. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They I thought, thought we were going to be jizzing on the seats together. <laughs> I just thought it was coincidental timing that he said that, and I happen to remember. I don't remember much, but for some reason, this whole thing, I was like really dialed in. I really wanted to make sure I was really focused on this cinematic experience. So I, rem I was paying very close attention to everything. Uh, at that time. Should we sue well, Cinemark for kink shaming us for seeing bros together? Well, I mean, he's just very considerate and he's allowing you to make a mess and he, he <laughs> saw both of you and he saw the longing looks, you know, and he, he knew that you both were very emotionally unavailable and you could be emotionally unavailable together and, and it would work out. Uh, I think there were plenty of emotions you. flowing during the film, mostly disgust, despair, <laughs> hatred. I think, Eggy, did I not go to the bathroom no more than three times during the film just because I needed a break? I, I, some, well, I didn't even uh, have to pee well, every time. I just wanted to leave. Yeah, wow, I remember. You're missing uh, out, man, on all these well, great jokes. I had to, I had to keep, yeah, because, uh, so, uh, funny thing. Yeah, basically, Gay Chad, I don't remember this character's name because it's completely <laughs> Gay irrelevant. Gay Chad but, works. Anyways, Gay Chad, who's like, you know, the Gay Chad that the main character has a relationship with or whatever in the film. Um, he really wanted to make, like, candies. He wanted to make a fudge factory. I'm not sure if that was, like, a pun or whatever. But anyways, <laughs> he, uh, towards the end, towards, towards the, you know, climax, no pun intended, of the film, uh, once the Gay Museum is funded... Uh, and he starts making, he makes Harvey Milk uh, chocolate. That's like, you know, because the guy, Harvey <laughs> Milk, uh, was like... American the, hero. So, so I thought he, I thought that was the guy who did Nambla. I guess he just uh, didn't do Nambla. He was known to be with uh, underage boys, but it wasn't Nambla. Anyways, but so oh, that was like the thing. Harvey, oh, oh, never mind. My, my screensaver just went on. Uh, thought my computer might have crashed. 
Harvey oh, Milk thanks. Chocolate, and then uh, in the game museum, there's uh, this part where people are going through like the roller coaster of gay trauma or something like that. <laughs> yeah, and, I did uh, miss that scene. What did I miss out on? So they go past like a picture of Ronald Reagan, and they go ah. And then oh, the uh, gay Asian man who funded it, like he comes up on a screen um, in a, what appears to be him standing in hell. And I don't know what exactly, <laughs> I, mean, I think, I don't really know what that was about. He's on a screen and he's just surrounded by fire. And I don't know what that was about. But anyway. Wait, so let the gay people uh, know what will happen after they die. <laughs> wow. <laughs> he comes in, he goes, uh, Oh, hey there. Uh, welcome to 2012. Yeah, Obama's president. And oh my goodness, you guys are having such a great time. Gay marriage is finally legalized. Certainly nothing bad is going to come after Obama. Uh-oh. Ha, and he, does, he has like a chihuahua and he does this little <laughs> laugh or whatever. And then like he goes up in smoke. So it's supposed to you know, symbolize that. Uh, Orange don't man bad. Don't flirt. Yeah, he's about to destroy the entire world. Which he did, of course. Like, the, the world has not recovered from Trump's presidency yet, right, Florian? I mean, he was the worst president ever. I mean, that's – you can see that. That's right. from, hey, from I'll, ha things. I'll tell you this. When Obama was on the campaign trail in 2008, he was anti-gay marriage. Donald Trump in 2016 literally hugging the gay pride flag up on stage. So he was the first candidate to ever endorse uh, gay marriage, and, and he won. So, you know, he, <laughs> Obama can't say that. Yeah, well, his, his policies were certainly not good, all right? Yeah, na uh, name three policies that Trump did that hurt gay people. Well, Trump is certainly taking advantage for, uh, taking credit for, for the, for the abortion thing, the Roe v. Wade. I mean, that's gay, not people gay people can't even get fucking pregnant, irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's sexual rights. Come on, man. What does that have to do with gay rights? Fucking Billy Eichner's not getting pregnant. Well, he he was trying to ban trans people from the military, but I guess wow. I, I, wait, it, it, you said pride, so it, that would include like everything from pride. So that's well, definitely one thing that I want to I want to make one quick that. interjection. Um, Biden just put this out. It was just in the news. Um, if a transgender person was born biologically male, they are forced to register for the draft, even if they <laughs> identify female from That's the second they were right. born. Based so Biden. Biden has, he literally doesn't care about their rights at all, and he wants them all to be uh, cannon fodder as soon as possible, no matter what. So That's I just right. want to say that real quick, but continue. Well, when are, when are we going to get a president who takes away the fucking draft? That would be the progressive thing, not making trans people sign up for it. I mean, I assume it was it was that way before, right? Or, well, I guess were there no trans people drafted if at all? If you're born then? with a penis, you have to sign up for selective service, courtesy of Brandon Biden. I mean, I assume that was the way like that before, right? I don't know, and I truly I don't mean, care. I'm too old for that shit now, anyway, <laughs> and I can lie well, about brought, mental illness, so they're not. Gonna you do brought shit it to up, me. so you, you can't. Eggie you brought don't it up. Don't yell at me, bitch. I'm pretty sure you brought it up. Eggy, what else happened on this roller coaster of gay trauma? Did I miss anything else? Uh, no, that was pretty much the two main things. Uh, was him starting his own fudge factory, making <laughs> Harvey Milk's chocolate, and uh, the gay thing. Uh, otherwise, it was not too much that you missed in that three minutes or whatever. Okay, uh, Florian, you said this is your favorite rom-com of all time, so I want you to elaborate on that a bit. Well, I mean, I like all the... Well, like I said, it's just the, the characters are just so interesting. I, I don't know. It's... Well, you better know because you're on a fucking podcast, so you better think <laughs> real hard about it. What's so interesting about these people? Well, for one, how they how they start out being just just so casual, you know, and, and so cynical, both of them. Well, one of them more than the other. And I, I just feel like they're, they're real people, okay? This is the, exactly the kind of... A gay podcast host that might exist, you know. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you. Uh, I'll I'll join in. I'll say here's something I actually liked from the movie in terms of characters and gay rom com. Uh, the gay guy, you know, main character Billy and gay Chad, they go on their movie date. They go out into the lobby. Uh oh, gay Chad sees his old high school football buddy, and suddenly gay Chad isn't acting so gay anymore. And he's like, "Oh yeah, no, I'm just here to see a movie with my friend, uh, gay podcast host. We're just friends. Don't worry." And uh, Billy's like, you know, making fun of him, like, "Oh wow, huh? We're just friends, huh?" I thought that was a pretty human moment that he's ashamed <laughs> to be in a relationship with Billy Eichner. <laughs> 
I mean, yeah, there, there's definitely a lot, a lot of times where he he's kind of shamed like that. So that's that's definitely relatable. And yeah, I, I and like then how it, it, what you like how it turns out that the the football friend who he met ends up also being gay. By the Hell yeah, that's great. I like how they actually hang out, but I guess they don't actually have sex together. I, wait, no, they do actually, uh, don't they, they? They make out in like a gr- grungy alleyway at one point, because that's super romantic. <laughs> Is he the guy that they have the threesome with? No. Hmm. Well, that one was also one. Well, that was definitely my favorite orgy, because they're like, <laughs> I... I want to have sex with this guy, but I also want to have sex with you. And then they they have this this really romantic threesome. And then there's just this random other gay guy called Steve, who just like fondles the butt, and he he just tries to get in on that threesome, you know. Oh, yeah, and the he- literal uh, fuck. They they literally have a beta orbiter for their <laughs> like orgies. Literally so beta that he can't <laughs> even get out on a gay orgy where they literally like fuck the wall and the floor, and he can't even get anything. That was pretty. No, funny. he he get well. He actually gets something. He asks for a massage, and they and they all massage his butt. So uh, okay, so let's uh let's talk about these gay orgies well, because there thing. are there are three gay orgies in the film, and this is Florian's <laughs> favorite. So continue. Go ahead. Well, and then the. Like our our main guy is obviously annoyed with this guy trying to get in on, on the orgy, you know. But then he just says like, "Yeah, what the hell? Okay, fine. We'll we'll massage your butt." And then another guy comes in and he's like, "Get out!" Oh, he We're came only in. Too for many. Su- yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you just get out. <laughs> but then he's like, "Hey, Steve." And then yeah, okay, fine. You may come into. And then they cut out. So I assume there's a lot more men that are just waiting to get in on that orgy. And I think it was just a a, a, a really Really, just hilarious, lovely, and and cute orgy. Okay, it was great. I think this movie is setting gay rights back about fifteen years because if this is an accurate depiction of the gay lifestyle, just like having an infinite amount of casual sex with every gay man you can find on the street, and just like you know, five gay guys all getting into one bed and fucking each other, that was what the the 80, 1980s panic of AIDS was about. That's what, you know, monkeypox is all about. Like, these motherfucking gay guys are so slutty that they're just spreading all these STDs to each other nonstop. Nobody can be bothered to put on a fucking condom because they're not afraid of pregnancy when they should be fra- afraid of AIDS and monkeypox. Like, can why are we celebrating this? You're causing horrible disease within your community. What, put what on a mean? fucking condom. <laughs> what do you mean they're causing it? People are consenting to these orgies. They know the risks, all right? That doesn't make it okay. Well, yeah, actually, consenting adults, that's pretty okay. Consent you, know? well, you, you can't well, consent to get HIV. Like, you, everybody, if you're going to have all of this casual sex with five men every fucking day of your life, at least use protection. But I guess it is uh, it's, you know, survival of the fittest or whatever, you know. Uh, <laughs> they're going to fucking obliterate their own community slowly but surely. I mean, they look pretty fit to me, man. Uh, I bet you were looking. <laughs> well, I would yeah, like yeah, to say I don't know how it is in I don't know how it is in Austria, but in the United States, if you're 18 years old, you cannot drink alcohol, you cannot smoke a cigarette. I don't think you could smoke marijuana. Um, you can't uh, uh, I think you certain things you can't rent like certain cars and certain hotels, uh, but allegedly you know you're uh, otherwise you know you're a consenting adult, but you don't have any of these freedoms. I'm just saying that if I have freedom to get AIDS, I should also have freedom to smoke a cigarette indoors. That's so all I'm true. saying. Well, I think nobody should be smoking cigarettes, so... And I think nobody should have AIDS, so... I'm I think nobody agree. should have a casual gay <laughs> orgy with five men every weekend of his life without using protection from STDs. Like, that's just insane to me. These people are so irresponsible, and I don't think it should be celebrated. Wow. Yep, just, just... There's a reason why gay people are not allowed to donate blood, because they're having these fucking gay orgies every weekend. Yeah, you know... It... It's like, I consent, I consent, but is there someone you forgot to ask? It's Mumpkin Jones, he does not consent. That's right. He's gonna (laughs) touch you. I mean, you're correct. (laughs) I don't consent to you spreading these diseases so (laughs) casually. No, I don't. Damn. I mean, I I don't know if they really have have sex that much, but I guess, I guess... There's three gay orgies in this film! (laughs) In this one movie! Well, I mean... 
I mean, the, the conceit is mostly that, like, like he he tries to keep pulling him to these orgies, but it, like, Bob doesn't actually like that so much. He, he probably just does it to to <laughs> to look cool in front of gay Chad, you know. I, <laughs> Well, what like, are the Bob other gay likes... orgies? There's there's one that me and Eggy have talked about a lot, especially during the Wheel of Cursed Meals, where uh, <laughs> the, the gay Chad and uh, Billy Eichner are having a, you know, a very uh, deep conversation about life, and the camera slowly pans and zooms out, and we see that uh, the whole time they were talking, two gay guys were sharing <laughs> gay Chad's cock in their mouth. So, you yeah, know, that was another that one great was... scene. That one was so good. Oh my god! Like, it's the only Bob, movie I've ever seen where like the punchline to a joke is two gay guys sucking a guy's dick. So at least it showed me something new. Yeah, quite original. <laughs> but even that one was was clearly something that that Bob wouldn't have done too often, you know, because like specifically he wasn't into it. But the guy was like, "Come on, wait, you can you can do it with me." Like Bob wouldn't have done this by himself. So, well, I would like to uh, remind that there's um, a couple different portions that center around what appears to be some kind of nightclub where it's all gay men congregating. And uh, Billy Eichner's character, he uh, makes some lamenting, like, oh, it's all these meatheads in here. Where's the true big brain intellectuals? But uh, gay Chad, when they first meet or whatever, he is literally there looking for numerous men to have sex with and he's like oh i'm having sex with that guy and that guy tonight and then that guy and that guy and those guys and they so i mean to be i i when you say you don't think you would die, i think that also gay chad is the character i do believe that spoke about being urinated on uh i think that that i think he's pretty much no i don't, I don't think anything. that was him i i well i i might i may be misremembering, but i know for sure that he was definitely uh talking and speaking on having group sex with numerous men in this gay club so for the record yeah he specifically said i'm gonna have sex with this guy and this guy and and then he he still kept well i mean he actually walked away from bob but bob followed him and they they kept they kept like chatting and, and he kept walking away and then at the end they they, they kind of like each other you know but then he, you know he's still gonna go to that orgy like he promised and then he just brings bob along so so that's what yeah, happened. It really reminds me of a happily ever after story, you know. Uh, <laughs> I know, right? I, I, if Shrek had just transformed into like five gay guys having an orgy, <laughs> like on the, you know, in front of uh, Fiona, I think it would have really been a heartwarming tale. <laughs> Hell yeah. But, uh, guys, I'm going to be honest. In terms of talking points, I mostly wanted to talk about the uh, the advocation for pedophilia and the gay orgies. So is there anything else big from this movie that I'm missing that we should really discuss? Well, there is, I, I guess I, I, I like to talk about my favorite joke, even though it was a fairly, fairly, fairly small, but it, it's the one, it's the part where he takes the, the butt, the butt photo, where the, where the guy's like, show picture of butt, and he, he just wouldn't hook up with him until he gets a butt pic. So he sighs and he's like, ah, oh, fine. And then he, he takes 20 minutes to, to shave and groom his butt. So you can take this picture. And he's like, oh, it looks too flat. And he, here, I, I took this picture just for you, honey. And then he, he's blocked. Uh, that was just so hilarious to me. You well, know? I mean, just... why? if you're a gay man and somebody wants to see your ass, why are you shaving it? You know, for all you know, the guy wants to fuck a hairy asshole. Otherwise, wouldn't he just be straight? Um, I mean, no, I feel like there's probably a lot of... I feel like gay people groom a lot, actually, and mm. I think they, they, they have, don't take that off. I, I feel like they shave themselves a lot, okay? I, 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 I feel like they're, they're well shaven, all right? Gay so people you, groom you, a lot, Flory. A quote from Florian Himsel. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say, I feel like um, what Florian was saying there, it actually, that would be like the third, adding on to Mr. Jimmy's two points, the third big point is uh, the whole overarching uh, pretty much from start to finish in the film billy eichner just making this point that he's so brilliant and so this kind of plays into it too yeah this scene it just had like shows gay men as like hypersexual grunting like instead of show bob and vagine they're just saying show butt <laughs> and uh basically this guy's just like over his phone like grunting like some kind of animal and billy eichner's like um don't you want to talk about reddit like oh my god did you see how upvoted and the, me want hole me want hole you know so that's also another, what I would consider, along with those previous two points, a big point in the film is basically Bill Eichner is just this 
misunderstood super genius uh, in a world full of grunting cavemen, but yet he's still on Grinder and, you know, engaging in orgies <laughs> and whatever else. So I, I'm not really sure that Mr. Eichner is such a big brain intellectual. I know that's a controversial point. You know, maybe some people will disagree, but I think, you wow. know, if he's going to keep on uh, attending these festivals and whatever he's got going on, these functions, nightclubs, bathhouses, etc., I think he should hold himself to a higher standard if he wants to be shown at the same level of respect as being a higher standard of person. Thank you. I think oh, Billy. I, I, I think Billy Eichner. He his goal was to make a rom com about a gay couple, the first one ever made, according to him. Which you know, I I might have to beg to differ. I have you seen a little film called Monkey Jones? It stops a school shooting. <laughs> uh, gay rom com for sure. But if he's trying to make this the most realistic depiction of dating life as a gay man, yeah, go to go off of what Eggy's saying. He so he's showing that his community in reality is extremely sexually deviant they want to have as many gay uh, casual uh, orgies as possible uh they will reject you if your asshole has too much hair on it and they uh, want small children to see a bunch of naked men in public so is that what i'm supposed to learn about the gay community from this film oh keep focusing on that huh uh, he well, sure did he had a whole scene <laughs> dedicated to it in his movie I would have cut yeah, that well, shit out and deleted all the footage so that nobody could ever <laughs> see me say that shit. Wow. How could you be well, okay with that? I mean, I I think some nudity can be fine cheese, man. Like, fine, whatever. Can a 12-year-old find something more entertaining than, like, a group of gay men stimulating or simulating sex on stage naked? There's got to be a better play to watch. Go fucking watch Oklahoma, dude. <laughs> that shit's probably just as gay. Anyway, so to to what to the other stuff. Uh, well, like you you guys keep saying, oh, he 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 thinks he's so smart. I think this this movie s s puts him into a lot of situation where where he's not actually coming off as that smart. I think I think it it comes off as correct. You know, he he is. A little arrogant at first, you know, and then he he falls in love with this guy who he considers to be, like, I, I guess pretty basic, you know, likes country and he, well, you know, he's just like a football player, you know, it's not the kind of guy that he wants, but it turns out I guess that's the kind of guy he needs, and that's why it works as a love story, all right. So, well, it, did so you learn anything about yourself, Florian? And not in the gay way, but you're always talking about how you're <laughs> on the hunt for your ultimate sugar baby, you know, the perfect girl for you. Maybe it could be you're looking in all the wrong places. Maybe somebody who is the exact <laughs> opposite of what you think you want is actually your perfect soulmate. You ever think about that? I mean, that's that's quite possible, but... You always uh, say you I think that tall chicks are hot. You want a, you know, a <laughs> tall, big titty goth waifu who loves Rick and Morty. Maybe you need like a, a four foot five black midget woman who thinks anime sucks and hates video games. <laughs> well, there's probably no way that's true, but you know, I, wow. I, I don't know. Wow, wow. Hey, any female black midgets <laughs> in the audience, Florian says there's no way he could possibly find you valuable as a human. Well, if you don't like anime and video games, come. What, what, what are we gonna talk about? Please? Gage had like country music, and they still fucked each other's butts. So yeah, but but he also was was nice and kind, and he he wanted to make. Oh yeah, unlike candies, black okay? gay or unlike black female midgets, he's nice and kind. <sighs> he, he, well, well, but let me let me just say one thing real quick here because I feel like okay, too far polar opposites. All right, you might not have enough common enough middle ground, but if you had, and I can say this from experience. Having a woman in your life, if you are a man who's very into anime and video games, you have a woman in your life that is less so, it, I feel like it will broaden your horizons a little bit. You might not be that same super fan. You might not have the same kind of attention to be a really ultra dedicated top 1% fan of that thing like maybe you would have otherwise being single. But if you have a woman in your life that has other interests and can expand, you know, sometimes it does help round you out a little bit, kind of, you know, gives you some things that you might not have thought you were too interested in before and kind of helps you see the world a little bit uh, in a different way. So I will say that. And also, if she's never played a video game before and you show her ball frogs, she might actually think it's good. <laughs> wow. Like, oh, wow, this is what a video game is. I guess this is okay. Wow, what a concept. I guess that's one way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I Sorry to, to burst your bubble, but my... To burst my, my asshole cherry? 
well, that, I'm not sorry for that. But basically, <laughs> <laughs> look, basically, I'm very superficial. Okay, I, I don't really care that much if she's got different interests than me, as long as she's hot and she's tall. All right, so that's <laughs> right. That's right. <laughs> and, and by hot, of course, I mean sin. So yeah, that's so, right. Okay. <laughs> Thank that's you. Right. <laughs> that's all that it fucking takes, fun. dude. Yeah, okay, how tall fine. do you so mean? That, like how? Like I don't, I don't know if you guys do feet and inches over there, but if you are aware of the concept, how tall does she have to be? Uh, just above average, because I'm the average size for a woman, so I guess she's just. just <laughs> hey, I'm taller. the average height for a woman. Okay, I think you're taller than me, aren't you, Florian? Yeah, well, we got taller women here, all right. Probably that's true. Right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that's great. <laughs> So you want yeah. a woman who's as tall as you, basically. That's pretty good. Or taller, yeah. Taller than you? Wow! It's very I mean, rare I... that a man wants a woman taller than him. That's pretty, uh, pretty good yeah, of you, Florian. I... Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm just really into into bellies, and if she's tall and she's gonna have an even longer belly, it'll be great. That's you know? right. That's right. Midriffs represent none of those fucking yeah. fat folds in the mix. <laughs> Keep it flat, ladies. Yeah. I mean, I'm probably gonna... I'd probably be fine with, with with a really cute short girl too, but I guess like it's just my private preference. Why are we even talk about this still? Because right? I'm done this? talking this about the a, gay movie. <laughs> this is a romantic <laughs> film, so we're speaking, you know, romantic things. You know, maybe what they could have done better. We're giving our little critique. You know, there's there's a variety of discussion going on here. I think it's positive. Mm -hmm. Just like the well, characters in the movie, HIV positive. <laughs> Wow. Well, how long till you two just get get it together? How long till one of you proposes to the other to to stay together for three months and then reassess, huh? I propose we make a movie called Bros Two, and the plot is a a man goes to see <laughs> Bros and he wants to protect children from these groomers, and it's like a, it's an all out slaughter, you know, an unofficial sequel. <laughs> Jesus, man, just hate crimes? Yeah, what, I mean... That's it, what you want? I don't want that to happen in real life. I'm saying the plot of a film, Bros 2. Oh, wow. Yeah, I think... And then Billy Eichner, as himself, has to, like, stop him before it's too late. And he has to, like... you know, He, <laughs> he has he, to play it? He created this monster, and now he has to stop it. Like, his movie inspired this violence, and now he has to be the detective who solves the, the case and stops this madman. I think that would be literally a better film in every conceivable way. Catch me if you can, but it's uh, like a man that's been radicalized by bros and Billy Eichner. Yeah, bros too. Fuck me if you can. <laughs> you know what? I, I don't buy this this grooming shit, okay? You know? You're the you, one you who got... said gays are known no, for grooming. No, no. Wow, fuck off. <laughs> look, look he, he was describing how his parents took him to a show and never knew people, okay? There's, there's no sex with children going on just because... <laughs> If the parents are there, it's gonna be fine, okay? Parents know what to do with their kids. You, you can stop worrying about the gay people. Hartsy's parents the showed him Breaking Bad when he was eight. Parents don't always know the best thing for a small child. No, that seems fine, and he loves it. So yeah, it seems like yeah, it Billy works Billy Eichner out. loves getting fucked in the ass, you know, just because you love something. <laughs> Doesn't mean well, you won't get AIDS from it. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, some people just just like to to live on the wild side, okay? And they take the risks. Yeah, a lot of risks for these people. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, it's probably not a huge amount. I mean, Bunky Pox wasn't a thing yet. Well, I don't actually, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Let me stop you there. Let me, let's in the film. Uh, they make a, uh, basically this this memorial for the original gay rights pioneers, and they also say, by the way, they've all been dead for 27 years because they all died of AIDS. That is something that's said in the film. <laughs> Yikes! No, 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 that's I remember not that what they said. <laughs> well, if Aggie okay, well, says they said it, I believe him. I was in the no, bathroom. Wait, well, maybe. No, I think there was there was like one one surviving something, right? But they, I remember that being a part of the film because they're like, listen, somebody needs to remember all the great prominent gay rights people of the 1980s because uh, they all died, and uh, you know it's implied that it was due to AIDS. No, oh, it's only that was implied. Not implied. <laughs> and that's no, that's no, that's because and that's like the whole thing too. That's why, like, you know, you wouldn't think why why is there so much like bizarre, seemingly ill-fitting Ronald. Reagan hatred in the film like they they you know Donald, the Donald Trump thing is at least kind of topical still maybe more so when the film was written but it's like what is this Ronald Reagan thing I guess basically like Ronald Reagan was basically like hey now all I'm saying is stop fucking man but 
<laughs> and I guess that he's like the the devil uh, because he said that. And uh, oh, it's it's actually pretty topical lines. because uh, the main thing that happened was that they demonized gay people for for all this AIDS stuff instead of treating them if they did have AIDS. There and is that's no why treatment for AIDS. There's no cure. The cure is well, they, wrap your willy before you fuck a fuck a, an asshole ridden with disease. No, that's and I, I'm not treatment. even anti-gay. Have all the gay orgies you want. Just stop spreading diseases while you're doing it. Just fucking wrap your dick up like straight people have to do. Is that so <laughs> much, Florian? Having safe sex? Something that they teach 12-year-olds? You Oh, you, we want 12-year-olds to learn sex education? The first thing you learn <laughs> at sex ed is to put on a fucking condom. Did these gay people skip that day of school? <laughs> But maybe they just go to a doctor really often, all right? Maybe they checked all their their gay paperwork at the at the door, you know, if they if they don't have AIDS. You don't know what they do, you know. I mean, they probably they probably should have mentioned it in the movie, something about that, but maybe not. I don't know. We do have these rapid response COVID tests nowadays. Maybe you know we just uh, in certain areas they can have a rapid response AIDS test, <laughs> and if you have it, you know you get quarantined until you don't have it. You know, however many decades it takes, <laughs> but either way. Well, AIDS doesn't really kill you anymore, so th there's not really that much reason not to spread it. I mean, Shut if, 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 up. There's not that much reason to not spread AIDS. Quote from Florian Himsel. <laughs> are you fucking kidding me? But I, I, well, you yeah. are right, though, because uh, I do have an uncle who is gay, and he has had AIDS for about 25 years, for real, I'm not wow. joking. And he's still alive and healthy, so I guess it's not that bad. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely way more survivable. And if people had focused on treating the illness instead of demonizing the gays, it would have just been fine, all right? They, well, then they had monkey pox, so it turns out that wasn't 100% true. Maybe, you know, maybe, I'm just saying, I'm just I saying, mean, you know. That, that's pretty new, okay? There's no way, well, we can yeah, just treat nothing, that now, okay? If we didn't tell them, to, they didn't successfully cease and desist on the uh, endeavors that were considered highly risky and dangerous and possibly causing of illness and disease. That's what I'm saying, but that's just my two cents. Uh, you know, they, they go to a lot of orgies at the start, but in the end, they settle down and they, they don't go to the orgies anymore, so... Yeah, after it, riding it's been... the cock carousel, he's finally ready to settle down. You know, the story yeah. is old as time. Yeah, see, it's, it, it all comes together and it's And it's it comes fine. in your I... asshole. <laughs> Like you, you wouldn't, you wouldn't talk like this about a straight because comedy. A str I've never seen a, a, a straight rom com that has three orgies in it. It just doesn't yeah, happen. I, I know. I want to see that. Holy and shit. also, just to be clear to Billy Eichner, your movie might have uh, lost some money because of the subject material, but also because I cannot remember the last time a romantic comedy came out in theaters and made its money back. It has not happened in at least half a decade uh it's because nobody goes to the theater to see fucking rom-coms anymore they're all straight to streaming for a reason you should have don't bitch about your movie not making money <laughs> when the genre itself is cursed theatrically you should have released this shit on paramount plus or whatever the fuck or on you know well, hiv can... positive plus whatever <laughs> well he can still release it all right it'll still make money i don't think it'll be that bad all right i'm just saying putting this in theaters was like a huge misstep big mistake but... and now he's blaming straight people for not seeing it when it, it could have been a straight rom-com and they wouldn't have seen it anyway yeah, but if if it's not in theaters, he would have missed out on all those beautiful gay butt cheeks slapping together. You know, it would have been re really sad if he wouldn't see like sad little Steve trying to to enter this threesome. All right, you watched been... a cam rip of this on a 16 inch laptop, Florian. I, what do you know about the theatrical experience? <laughs> Why must you keep lying and saying I I do crimes? This movie's but... not even playing in Austria. Hitler banned it. I traveled and I saw it, okay? So it definitely full of shit. happened. <laughs> First class jet to the bros premiere in Los Angeles. Billy <laughs> <laughs> really, Eichner was like, yo, is that Florian Himsel? That guy smells good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and there, there was an orgy there, yeah. Okay, I'm done. Uh, do you guys have any final yeah. thoughts on bros, Florian? I know you do. <laughs> wow, where to begin? No, actually, I, I've got nothing. I, I said everything. <laughs> Eggy, you have any final thoughts about this fine film? How many How many stars out of five on Letterboxd? Six? Well, you know, uh, it's basically, um, how would I say this? No, I don't think that anyone should watch this film. <laughs> no. I, I, th <laughs> I feel like, well, here's the thing. I, I feel like in terms of 
the uh, enjoyment. It is, in terms of the Kino factor, uh, I would give this, I guess, a very low score. However, with that being said, I feel like the movie is... Uh, I can't remember if I... Was it... Was it this film I called like a fever dream kind of experience, no pun intended? Uh, but it was you just. You also said that about my a, son Hunter, uh, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was my son Hunter. I think that was the one I was thinking of. Uh, you know, both very similar films. Uh, but anyway, it's something that I feel like if a lot of people watch this just in you know, like a blind viewing experience. I feel like it would cause a disturbance throughout the country. I feel like there would be like people that would really, uh, you know, it, I think maybe it's better for Billy Eichner that it's going towards slant. This, you know, the the numbers are skewing rather uh, towards a certain community. I feel like if uh, you know a lot of people that weren't particularly in tune with his vision saw this film, it would cause a lot of mass uh, social unrest. Uh, just, what? You know, no, Jesus, <laughs> man. <laughs> I'm no, just no. saying. Uh, I'm just saying. I thought it was particularly egregious. I thought it was just like the. <laughs> some of it was just uh, shocking, really. <clears throat> Which I guess there's been shocking films throughout time, but I feel like right now we're living in a particularly charged time, and I think Mr. Eichner would probably agree. Um, you know, that's why he's blaming a certain demographic for not giving him the sales he wanted. But I feel like maybe that's a silver lining for him. I feel like if a lot of people did see this movie, it would be shocking. It'd be uh, like if the director of a Serbian film was like, why didn't anybody go see my movie? What the hell? It should appeal well, to everyone. I guess it's good then that he had that butt poster, you know, where, where you see the gay butt. So you definitely know what you're in for. Oh, Aggie, hey, hey, Aggie, uh, I just remembered. Um, speaking of learning about gay culture, there was something in the movie that I had no idea what was going on and you had to explain this to me. Oh, but yeah. Evidently, so do, um, yeah, go ahead. So they take uh, poppers, which is something that basically uh, it's some kind of um, mild numbing I think it is basically like they snort this stuff or they they it's like an inhalant I think is what it is basically they, they pop this bottle and then they like inhale this drug uh, and it like numbs their assholes or something so that they can just go on for hours and hours <laughs> yeah uh, yeah and that's included in the film among other you know like I said among urine and uh, you know questionable you know uh, <clears throat> Uh, proclivities or a certain inclination towards underage boys, uh, you know, <laughs> drugs, uh, all these different things that I thought, you know, I thought this was incredibly shocking that that <laughs> they put this in the movie. They're like, oh, this is going to be really great and we're all going to, you know, celebrate this or whatever. And uh, uh, so shocking, a bit horrifying, a bit sickening and disgusting. Um, and for that reason, I feel like, <clears throat> you know, I don't want, I wouldn't it's kind of like uh, uh, some kind of medicine that you wouldn't want to take because it tastes bad or whatever, but it kind of clears you up a little bit. <laughs> Maybe you might call it red pill. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, Should we get one I of think... these for Wheel of Cursed Meal 6? This, like this gay thing that you have to snort up your nose to numb your asshole so you can have you know, flawless gay sex. <laughs> Should we invest in one of these? How much could it cost? Because with how many orgies uh, I... he's having, I hope it's pretty cheap. Uh, well, uh, well, I mean, he's getting a lot. 200,000 200, live viewer super chat money. I, I don't know. I don't mm -hmm. even know where you get it. I don't think I want to know. Um, but yeah, anyway, so the film to me was shocking. Um, <clears throat> but I feel like at the same time that it's definitely spurred some conversations that people maybe not be so comfortable having. I mean, not the ones that Mr. Eichner was uh, maybe thinking would be spurred, <laughs> but no. Uh, so I guess my takeaway is that <clears throat> it was not a pleasant experience um <laughs> it did have a couple things that made me laugh so i'll give it that uh so maybe i give it a 1.5 or something uh <clears throat> but i feel like my conscience is saying uh that it should probably stay towards a one <laughs> out, out, out of, of ten out of five okay. i mean well that's not uh, okay. too bad i guess yeah okay i'll give it a one out of five yeah i mean i was thinking no! uh, an out of five scale <laughs> i don't want to change up now uh, I was thinking you, out of you said one point five. five. Yeah. Well, Florian, you you said this is your favorite rom com. So, what is your score out of five? Well, mine would be five. Are you fucking kidding me? It's it's a flawless <laughs> five out of five film. I mean, it's as good as a rom com will be. That should be a three maximum. Well, you can't blame it for the genre. It's yes, in. you can. Yes, you can. What? No, you. If can a genre be... sucks, it sucks. No, you could be. Some 
objective with the one that's better you, you can you can overlook the genre okay some people just want to see romantic comedy sometimes and i don't know you i don't gave see why this you gay wouldn't. orgy pedophile movie a five out of five sincerely yes what can you write up your letterboxd review so i can take a gander uh, maybe oh boy well we've gone on almost an hour on this gay shit pun intended so, Look, I, I actually, I, I, I'm really disappointed that you guys hate this so much. What would you give it, Mumpkin? Then? I, on my letterbox, I gave it a two. A two out of five. Yeah. That's not bad. Yeah. No, I mean, why, why you, why there, you, there's some good humor in the movie. Some of the jokes I thought landed, but most of the movie was unbearable. Well, what? Well, why do you <laughs> unbearable? Two out of five. Okay, fine. I left fine. the room three times. <laughs> but, but it was still a two out of five. What is? Okay, Two out of five, five is still pretty bad at, like, with my rating scale. It is? Yeah, huh. it's pretty low. That's a fucking 40%. That's, like, super F. That's not super F. Yes, two, yes it is. Anything less than 60% is an F. All right, wow. you know what? Okay, after some reconsideration, you know, I, I guess I could give it a two also, because <clears throat> as uh, shocking as oh, yeah. some of it was, and how uh, deeply unpleasant the film was to view, I felt like... It was enlightening. It had enlightening aspects <laughs> and a, a few funny jokes. Yeah. I, I wish I could remember the few funny jokes, but they were in there somewhere. <laughs> well, the one that, uh, I, well, I guess it wasn't really a joke, but towards the end, so they have like this, the panel of the gay museum that meets up every so often, and uh, one of these is a 400 pound, what I thought was a black woman. <laughs> turns out it actually a black trans woman. That's right. Uh, I, I had no idea the whole time. I just thought it was a 400 pound black woman. And at the end, the oh, it individual was actually, was like- It was actually mentioned in my face. Well, yeah, but she, I mean, it's it's said, <laughs> as a trans, I'm like, well, when that came up, I'm like, I guess, you know what? <laughs> you don't need, horror, if you if you could uh, put on 400 pounds, those are gonna be some very all natural boobs. They don't look fake at all. That's so right. you know what? Hey, there you go. Hell yeah! Well, it it's actually in in my favorite joke in the in the show. It is revealed that I, well, it's cemented that she is trans. It's the the joke where he takes the, the steroids and then he's just like ah, oh, roid rage, and he just just lashes out at everyone. And I I thought it was so funny. Yeah, there's what a good joke where uh, Grace from Will and Grace, like the actress, shows up and uh, Billy Eichner like <laughs> completely pisses her off and she's like screaming at him for a minute. That was actually a good scene. Yeah, uh, there is a lot of funny shit in this, yeah. you know? Yeah, like, Billy Eichner yeah. is a comedian. He should stick to the comedy and less of the political diatribes, I think. But I think that's it for this episode. You guys have anything you want to plug? <laughs> well, everyone check out my, my YouTube channel, Himsel Games, everyone. Eggy, do you have any uh, gay sex advice videos coming out? Uh, no, I'm currently. Uh, the advice would be this don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> no. Relax, don't do it. <laughs> if you want to go watch bros, relax, <laughs> don't do it. Just stay at home. No. Yes. Um, I'm currently uh, in a submarine recording this from uh, the bottom of a body of water. I had to take a little bit of time off society. It's my day off of work. Uh, yeah, I just was getting too much society lately. I felt like I was about to star in the Joker Part 2. You know, I was singing and dancing around, leaping gracefully uh, in public spaces. I said, no thanks, let me go underwater. So I have nothing to plug at this time except uh, my ears after I'm done recording this to just meditate for a while and ruminate on the state of this culture. And uh, wow. if you like uh, Aggie doing a Wings of Redemption impression, the next episode of uh, Wings of Redemption Snack Testers should be out sometime this week when this podcast is coming Ooh, out so stay tuned waste. for that that's cool. most excellent indeed bye everybody bye oh, peace